my name's Barry Johnston and I'm from Real Peeps Occupational Therapy for Kids and this year we will be providing the Occupational Therapy Screening Program at your child's school. Occupational therapy is an area that's required in early development and early intervention because it really helps support your child's growth and development from a physical perspective as well as with their self-regulation. When all of these areas come together, it really enables that child to fully participate to their best potential in the classroom as they enter the school system. Interestingly, one of the biggest predictors of a child's success in later life is their ability to self-regulate at four. A child's ability to self-regulate, i.e. contain their emotions, behaviour and attention at four years of age is one of the biggest predictors of our success as an adult. In this particular study, it identified that children who self-regulated well at four years of age were more likely to achieve greater physical health, mental well-being and job satisfaction and engagement in longer learning as well. So it's really important that this highlights that early intervention in these domains of behaviour, emotional management and attention regulation are really critical to implement in the early years as soon as your child has started school. Another really key part of research that's recently emerged is that we seem to be having a new benchmark in our child's motor skills development. A local Perth research group from UWA called the Kiddo Group recently released statistics about the decline in our children's gross motor abilities. In 1994, a child on average was able to stand on one leg for 22 seconds. And in 2019, the average ability of a child was 14 seconds. So it's a really significant decline in the ability to control their balance. And interestingly, the eye-hand coordination of children of four years of age has significantly decreased as well. So what we're seeing is that more children these days have more challenges with their motor coordination. And it's really important that we still manage to capture all of these children that need assistance with their gross motor skills and eye-hand coordination, because these are key physical areas that lead to a child fully participating you know, in their social skills, in their playground and in the classroom. So when it comes to occupational therapy in schools, some of the key areas we support children include their play and social skills, their attention and regulation, but also their physical skills of handwriting, gross motor coordination and engaging in the playground. In relation to the screening service you will be receiving and your child will be, will be participating in, there's some really key physical features that we'll be looking at in regards to your child's development that we have identified as having a significant impact on that child's participation in the classroom. And they are the domains of core strength, body awareness, eye hand, uh, ocular motor skills, motor planning, fine motor skills, their pre-writing skills, as well as their joint mobility. These are key physical areas that allow the child to sit on the mat and listen to the teacher, enable to engage in the playground and play on the equipment, but also to sit at a table, pick up a pencil and make meaningful marks with that pencil. And so when we identify these uh, strengths or challenges for a child early on in the school years, it can give the families and teachers great information about how to further support their development in these domains. So what you can expect out of the screening process, basically we see your child in a one-to-one -one assessment setting on a day that they attend school. We make this a fun, engaging session where we play lots of games and activities, we do exercises to see how strong their tummy and back muscles are, we play Simon Says games, we build with blocks, we use pegs and tongs, and eventually we do get them to pick up a pencil and make marks with that pencil. Once we've done the screening assessment, we have a, a way to score your child and so you will come home with a report several weeks after the assessment and that will give an overview of all of those domains we tested and how your child ranked in those domains. The rankings are emerging, so that means your child needed quite a lot of support in that domain. Con developing, which means your child needs, is, it's getting there but still needs a little bit of targeted focus and practice in those areas as well as consolidating, which means your child really has mastered that skill quite well for their age. So you'll get this home in a report, and at the end of the report there will also be recommendations about what we recommend for your child's future. It might mean that no intervention or further assessment is required, or we may recommend that your child have some follow-up assessment or participate in some therapy. We also can give you the option of referral to the Child Development Services, which is a government-funded service which you can access for free. There is a waitlist for this service, 
and we can also provide you with other private agencies who can support you in a fee for service capacity. We will be running parent workshops for families as well once you've received the reports and that allows you to come in and ask the therapist questions about your child's report but also access information about what you can do to support that child's development in your home and in the school setting. So in terms of building healthy brain growth, what can we recommend as occupational therapists to support your child and get them starting school and their long learning career in a positive fashion? And one of the key things we've found across the board in all of the screens that we conduct is that children these days are lacking strength. And so we really encourage you to think about building up your child's their little muscles and making their bones nice and strong and doing that through lots of physical activity. So encourage them to crawl, climb, kick a ball, go for a run and using the playground equipment will build their body awareness but also their core strength. We also identify that self-regulation is a really big area of a child's development. However, this isn't something we can come in and quickly get a snapshot of your child's ability to self-regulate. You're the most uh, well-known person to that child as the family and soon will be the teacher as well. And so we really rely heavily on your feedback about your child's self-regulation. But if you feel your child does have some challenges with managing their emotions, behaviours or attention, we'd strongly recommend that you seek support from your classroom teacher who might advise whether a referral for specific intervention and assessment on their self-regulation would be warranted at this time. Playing is a really key part of a child's occupations and we encourage that through play-based learning at school and as I'm sure you do at home and just looking at play as an opportunity for learning and play can be physical, it can be sitting down reading a book together or playing with blocks and cars and thinking about lots of variety and opportunities for play in their everyday routines will really help build those early learning connections in their brain. We know that moving their body is vital for all areas of brain growth which will assist their gross motor skills but also fine motor skills, language capacity and cognitive functions as well. So making sure your child gets lots of physical activity on a daily basis regularly throughout the day will have a flow on effect to their child's strength, language and communication, their self-regulation and their cognitive capacity once they reach the schooling years as well. What goes hand in hand with that is screen time. So as a health professional, we really recommend you adhere to the Australian Department of Health guidelines, which recommends for three to five years, no more than two hours screen time a day. And for five years and up to 12 years of age, no more than two hours of screen time a day. I think that's really tricky to achieve sometimes because we are inundated with screens in our daily life. So the Telethon Child Health Institute has a really nice rule to remember and that's for every 20 minutes of screen time, try and remember to have 20 minutes of physical activity, 20 blinks of the eye and 20 minutes of looking in the distance as well. So the 20-20-20 rule from the Telethon Child Health Institute. So just as a reminder to try and get your child to be as physically active as possible, and the Australian Department of Health, the minimum guidelines and recommendations is that children from 5 to 12 years of age should exercise for at least 60 minutes every day. And this is, will, will enable them to have optimal physical and mental health and well-being. It also recommends for 3 to 5 years of age that you should be aiming for 3 hours of physical activity. So that just reminds us that all of those little bodies sitting in that classroom do need to come home and burn off energy and it might be worthwhile burning off that energy with lots of physical activity throughout the day and even before you get to school as well. So this is just a reminder that childhood is a journey, it's not a race and through this screening service that we offer your school it's not about saying where your child is or isn't in their development, it's about giving you information, equipping you with knowledge to understand what supports your child might need and you know where they're functioning well so that you can dedicate time and energy into other domains of their development. All children will get to their final destination in the end but we know the evidence tells us that early intervention is vital to supporting children that may have needs. And this has a long lasting impact on their engagement in education and building of relationships as well. So as I said, childhood is a journey, it's not a race. But in order to make that journey smooth and happy and 
For the whole family, as well as that child, we need to make sure we do identify if that child has some needs or challenges and that we support them on that journey as well. I'd like to thank you for your time and I wish you well in the school year ahead for you. If you do have any questions or you'd like to have a, make a specific referral for occupational therapy, you can feel free to reach out to myself or one of us at the team who visits your school. My name is Barry Johnston and you can contact me at ferry at little-peeps.com.au.